rights sector um, and this um, monitoring committee report was all about mo mostly about the opposition rep and the repression of opposition in Ukraine. Uh, unfortunately, after three weeks uh, passed and uh, no changes have been seen and actually opposite uh, the um, Yanukovych government and uh, his faction in the parliament controlled by him has rejected any attempts by the opposition, proposed by the opposition to decriminalize the uh, laws uh, in the criminal code uh, that's been uh, you know, there since 1960 on which uh, my mother and other opposition leaders have been um, accused of and sentenced um, and um, none of the kind of recommendations in, the, in the, uh, this resolution were followed or um, introduced uh, but actually you know done the, the opposite <coughs> way, went the opposite way uh, but uh, today I just wanted to give a specific message um, on what went on with uh, with the medical help trying to you know to, to, to get to my mother by diplomats in G German diplomats and Canadian embassy in Ukraine uh, that they try they organized the independent mission uh, to Ukraine to see my mother uh, so the doctors can first for the first time in after six months uh, can diagnose her because her health has been worsening significantly but uh, during their visit uh, uh, they the diplomats themselves saw the uh, the way that law has been abused and the human rights have been have been breached numerously by the authorities and penitentiary system in the um, uh, in the general prosecutor office in the colony itself where my mother was placed um, and of course uh, uh, you know following the all the breaches of law and the human rights that has been done during during the process of her imprisonment and then uh, moving her to the colony and um, uh, all the illegal uh, uh, procedures uh, I during the court and the, the fact that she, w she has been arrested for the second time in her cell uh, illegally and uh, uh, now uh, she's actually been changed, the status of her has been changed to the convicted status. And that was also done deliberately by the authorities, uh, in, so that uh, she she um, is not allowed to see relatives or defense lawyers, and uh, doctors as well. So after a few days of battling uh, with <laughs> authorities in the colony and Ministry of Health, who's been uh, falsifying the diagnosis all through this three months since my mother started having severe pain in her back and couldn't walk. Um, the Ministry of Health doctors claim that she is healthy, but today we had a breakthrough. And uh, after uh, this pressure has been put by the German doctors, who stated today that uh, she is uh, ill and she needs a very serious treatment, and they're going to recommend uh, more medical treatment in a few days. Uh, the penitentiary system accepted it, and actually, for the first time, they accepted that they've been lying all this time. Uh, about her health, her state of health, that she was healthy, but now they they admit that she would probably need operation, and if she needs operation, that they would probably allow this to happen outside the colony. So today we got, you know, first kind of a little victory, um, and today we could say that if uh, they admitted this lie, that means that all the previous. Um, statements by the Ministry of Health and the penitentiary system and their ways to um, ignore um, all the concerns of health and, and illegality of the whole process um, you know was, was also very, you know false and, and fake and it was all a lie and um, you know that that's that's the probably the specific message that I wanted to give today that uh, despite uh, their attempts to uh, falsify the diagnosis and state that she was healthy to stand up another court, another sentence, another 10 criminal cases uh, that were filed against her with no legal basis. Um, that now they admit that um, she is not uh, a healthy person and needs medical treatment. So, what do you think, what is wrong with her? Uh, so far, um, German uh, doctors, who the professors from Charité Clinic, uh, they made a statement today through their press uh, office that 
uh, she has very serious problems with her back. They didn't mention exactly details because they're going to do that in a few days uh, together with recommendations of how she should be treated for that. Um, but uh, through the scans and through uh, after examining her for a few hours, they uh, said that um, she, she, she's got very bad pain syndrome and that uh, they've checked it and uh, they can um, uh, state that it's true. And that um, you know, there's just that there's a serious uh, problem with her, with her spine and her disc. But you know, they, they still didn't make a statement what exactly the details. Mm -hmm. So this happened in the prison hospital. You did the scans. Uh, they they did the scans twice uh, uh, after also a, a lot of pressure put from the from the diplomats and the family, um, and the scans show that uh, she's got a severe problem w with her back. But we were still waiting for the German doctors to state. But today, uh, after these false statements from the Ministry of Health, they, they today they actually stated that you know she she needs serious medical treatment. Yeah, but you know, despite the fact that uh, she is illegally arrested and the procedures against used against her to pressure her psychologically and morally, like that she's got 24 lights uh, in in cell all the time, the video surveillance 24 hours, which is actually illegal in that type of colony, even because it's not a strict regime colony. Uh, they're, they're denying the visits now of the defense lawyer. They've been denying him visit uh, for a few days now uh, because of no, really of no reason, and uh, he, he cannot even go in as a member of parliament there anymore. So, you know, the, the, the whole process continues of breaching the human rights, and uh, we can say now that uh, on her example, we can, we can say that there are any you know, human rights left or a rule of law left in Ukraine. So, um, uh, also uh, another <coughs> very specific message is, uh, is that uh, they're trying, uh, the authorities and the se security services, BU is trying to speed up the uh, investigation on other criminal case. And, uh, and uh, yes, a few days ago, the court decided to <coughs> limit the time when the, the material c uh, files can be started by her defense lawyers. Uh, and that wouldn't give her enough time at all to study the, like, I don't know, about, uh, I think it was 35 volumes of uh, material case uh, that was also illegally brought up against her, uh, like as a resurrected criminal case from 16 years ago. Uh, so they're trying to do everything to speed up the process and convict her before European Court of Human Rights can make any kind of um, positive, can make any kind of positive decision or progress in that matter. At the EU, I think, got involved um, last year and said that it basically wasn't compatible with, with the Ukraine being involved with Europe um, and that appeared to have very wide um, implications. Are you hoping to put pressure on the EU or via the Ukrainian government via the EU? How are you going to go about doing that if you are? Oh, well, in a uh, in few, in few days I have an um, opportunity to speak at the OSCE <coughs> assembly on the security of Ukraine, and uh, Ukraine is presiding there this, this year, and um, it would be a very good chance to raise um, the, the, the issue on national security now, because um, Yanukovych uh, trying to uh, change the constitution uh, and to make parliament elect, elect the president rather than public elect the president, because he knows now of the evident fall in his popularity. And certain certain changes like that that uh, you know he he's doing um, using uh, the, the grab of, of power that on power that that he's been uh, exercising for this few few years that you know it's becoming very dangerous for the national security because uh, for example even if you look at the uh, negotiations on the Russian gas deal that he tried to give away. Um, the uh, naval base in Sevastopol. He gave away the naval base of Sevastopol for 24 years. So it, in these negotiations, he rather than agreeing for, you know, uh, for, for for the uh, protecting the national interest of Ukraine, he gives it up. So that's partly what what I'm, I'm going to talk about also. And of course, the critical level of corruption that uh, Transparency International. Um, noted recently uh, um, connected to the preparation for Euro 2012 sports game. Yeah.
Okay. And, uh, and presumably you hope to um, gain the support of the UK government, UK diplomats to put pressure on the Ukrainian government via the EU? Well, what we're trying to do is on the basis of the um, uh, resolution that's been passed in Parliamentary Assembly, uh, it's very important now to create a lot of pressure for the government to, to act upon this um, recommendations that's been put in this in this monitoring committee report. So far there was no action for it, so uh, we were, were trying to um, ask uh, and uh, appeal to the governments, to the national governments, to have the same similar resolutions uh, in support of that resolution and that was passed. Have you seen anyone yet from the British government? Not yet. No, we're planning uh, another visit with the ex-Vice Prime Minister on Foreign Affairs, uh, Dr. Namira, in a few weeks' time. What kind of a response did you get in the United States when you went to the General Assembly? In uh, we had uh, actually a very short time. Uh, the Senate organized a hearing on Ukraine, and uh, it was very important. Uh, message actually was not given from us, the Ukrainians, but was given from the senator, uh, Senator Shaheen, who was presiding, and he, he she was very s strong. She, she sent a very strong message, uh, condemning you know the, the processes that uh, in Ukraine. I mean, Freedom House stated recently that. Um, Ukraine has become partially free rather than a free country and so far we've been we had very good support from the State Department and from Secretary Clinton herself to um, to put more pressure on, on these people um, but in general you know we hope that, I hope that um, you know that it won't be just pressure not not just for appeals but uh, there could be some restrictive measures uh, applied to people who are creating these repressions and who are causing um, this, you know, democratic institutions to fail in Ukraine. Sorry, I, I didn't catch the name of the, the, the UK government representative. They, did you say that you were, you were planning to meet the UK government representative? Yeah, we're planning to meet the, the Foreign Affairs, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and uh, we're, meet we're committee in the parliament. So we already planning some some uh, some meetings, but okay. it has not uh, has not has not been confirmed yet. But uh, it's it's not um, it won't be a uh, problem because uh, we're we're ac uh, actually uh, doing it for the UK embassy in Ukraine. You're now currently based in Kiev. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. and how often have you managed to see your mother? Mm -hmm. um, uh, well, now because the change of her status, I will be able to see her uh, once a month for maybe more rare uh, because uh, she's been denied actually the right to see her relatives, to see her defense lawyer, to use a telephone uh, to, to reach them because now it, it, according to her rights, she can use, uh, you know, she can uh, communicate on the telephone, meet relatives, you know, meet the defense lawyer to study the case mm -hmm. which has been put to the court. And she's been denied uh, most of her rights, uh, being in the status of already sentenced, sentenced mm. person. On the basis Although of this. Although illegally sentenced still. <laughs> huh? But on the why, why do they sorry? Um, why do they say that on the basis of the sixteen-year-old um, previous? Well, the, uh, uh, she's case. she's been. Uh, they, I think you know they've confused also the the terms of whether she is under investigation or sentenced mm. themselves. And uh, they've, uh, against the, any kind of Ukrainian law or any other law, they've uh, uh, arrested her for the second time when she's been in the cell already, when she's been arrested uh, on the gas case. Uh, they've done it so that um, she can have investigator st status of the, invest the person under investigation. Um, so that um, it was completely absurd arrest. Now, now this arrest is, is over. Went after two months, and now her status is as of the sentenced person, or is of a convicted person. Mm. Uh, and because of this status, he's, she's got yes, certain see. rights, yes, uh, you know, yeah. to. Yeah, but uh, they've been completely ignored, and uh, you know, they're not not protected at all. So nobody can can you know enforce them, or even her defense lawyer is not at the moment let in to see her. Mm -hmm. um, so they've been also very. Uh, rid ridiculous, absurd uh, ways they treated diplomats, for example, they, they put them in the room and kept them five hours without heating in, mm. in a, a special room, so they give up and say, you know, they cancel the mission of doctors. Mm. 
uh, being present there. So they did everything for the doctors just to give up mm. and leave, but they haven't. Uh, and uh, at the moment, you know, they had to, the penitentiary system had to take one step back and admit that she's, she's in pain and she needs medical treatment. Is she getting medication now? I mean, uh, <laughs> Not really. I mean, she's been getting, uh, for this three months that she's been in severe pain, and I mean the pain is 6 out of 10 according to international level mm. of, of um, the categorization. She's been given just weak painkillers and, uh, you know, she was, uh, um, she couldn't, uh, she wasn't able to sleep properly, so mm. they used sleep deprivation to uh, kind of psychologically pressure her and I continue to do so because so far there was no medical treatment given to her. Uh, what they've also achieved is that they uh, cancelled the blood test uh, to, to be done uh, during the investigation of the independent doctors. They put uh, certain conditions to the doctors and diplomats by which they said, you know, if you take the blood sample, we also need one blood sample. and. Um, if you don't agree, we're not going to let you um, mm -hmm. take the blood sample. And it's of course, <laughs> according to doctor's ethics, the patient's word is, is, mm -hmm. is the first, is priority. And uh, she uh, refused to do that because of uh, the previous incidents uh, connected to the Ministry of Health doctors falsifying the diagnosis. I mean, not giving her help when she was unconscious for two hours mm -hmm. um, on the 6th of January. They, they came only 20 minutes later, although um, when she was unconscious on the floor, uh, although they have 24-hour video surveillance there. So she has all the right not to trust these doctors now, even that they admit that they've been lying to the public and, and about her uh, state of health. When are the next elections in Ukraine? Uh, it's uh, this autumn, uh, it's parliamentary elections <coughs> and um, uh, we met recently uh, Mr. Sikorsky, uh, Minister Sikorsky, uh, in, Poland. in Poland, yeah, the foreign minister, and he stated that uh, we're not going to consider these elections free and fair if the opposition leaders uh, are not going to, you know, be a part of this. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's been the same said in the in the monitoring committee report and the resolution as well. But it seems like uh, government ignores uh, large, uh, largely all the you know, appeals and all the messages and recommendations uh, undermining you know, the, the, the future of Ukraine in, in Europe. Um, well, now with the football coming up, um, you have quite a good chance for attracting attention and with the Euro 2012. Yeah, and I, I think it's going to be... Um, it's, it's going to be met with many protests, and the, the, I mean, the whole process will, will be um, probably, you know, spoiled by, by, the, by the protests of the Ukrainians uh, mm -hmm. during, during the games. And I think, uh, you know, it, it, of course it's, it's, you know, politics and sport should be separate, and it's a mm -hmm. of celebration of democracy and sport. Uh, unfortunately, I can't see how it can be compatible with what's going on in, in Ukraine and the way that uh, government is dealing with their political opponents by you know trying to um, just trying to kill them in prison really mm. because uh, other, the other two prisoners Mr. Lutsenko and Mr. Vashenko have been in prison without conviction the, the, the court hasn't made any decision for over almost uh, one and a half years uh, they're in really bad state of health um, you know maltreated uh, forcefully fed, uh, I mean, Mr. Lutsenko was forcefully fed when he decided to go on hunger strike uh, with, mm. you know, so it just, there's no consideration for human rights at, at all, in, unfortunately. So mm. something should be done, you know, and uh, <coughs> the only um, demand that the Parliamentary Assembly, European Union, and now even State Department in the U.S. is, is um, is putting forward to Yanukovych is for immediate release and to use his constitutional powers to um, uh, pardon the people who... Um, and we think also that now that penitentiary system uh, has admitted it, we think that actually they've been lying to the president about mm. their you know, state of health, about the, um, the, the legal status of the, of the prisoners. So we hope that he can intervene and, and do 
something about it and correct it before but it's too late. But you could target, for example, the Interior Minister, because the Interior Minister is in charge not just the prison system, but sporting events, is he not? So uh, he's, yeah, he's been recently a, changed. He's vulnerable, yeah. So. Uh, yeah, he's been he's been recently changed, and he was the one who created all all the show trials, and uh, mm. he's put uh, uh, people to prison. Actually, he was the head of, of uh, repressions, and now he's been moved to the position of minister of finance. So now uh -huh. the new minister cannot be, you know, accountable for mm. what's what happened in in the past to the uh, to these people. So. You know, Did things get better after the new minister came in then, or was there, was there any connection? You see, uh, the only connection is that uh, Yanukovych is um, g uh, grabbing power slowly and systematically, and he's putting his own people onto each ministry uh, and power ministry, meaning mm -hmm. that uh, security, uh, the police, um, uh, prosecutor office. So so far, he's got on this on these key positions. Uh, he's close. Uh, he's close people. Uh, and judiciary thus is very uh, dependent on the on on such um, on such ministries via the High Council of Justice that been created also during Yanukovych's rule by his judiciary reform, which has. General Prosecutor as as a member of mm. this High Council of Justice. Uh, recent till recently, it had this uh, Interior Minister, mm. uh, but um, European parliamentarians uh, forced him to leave this High Council of Justice mm. because mm. it doesn't, yeah, you know, correspond to any kind of system mm. in the world. That mm. you know, there's no system that exists like this. So, um, but so far, we don't see any change for the better, and the repressions are just worsening, and that's. But no, looking, try to ring the alarm <coughs> looking, bells. looking at this oil deal with Russia, do you think that this is being politicized? You mean yes, yes, yes. yes. Uh, Of course. I mean, it's been political issue, and polit you know, it's been politicized for ev every year because every year uh, <coughs> Ukraine needs to negotiate the price for gas. And uh, back in 2009, when the, uh, my mother managed uh, together with Putin to solve this European gas crisis. Uh, she put in the agreement that during three years Ukraine uh, will go back to market relationships with, with on the gas trade with Russia and to you know to forget to kind of cut off this political influence on on, on Ukraine uh, and to help uh, Ukraine to move forward with developing alternative energy sources um, and so far you know it's been condemned by this government because uh, what she's done, she removed the corrupt uh, middleman from, from this guest trade, Rosso Coronergo, who, who are now the uh, members of government like Minister of Energy, they were de facto partners in this, in this company and now they're just taking revenge on her for doing this. <laughs> and then for these kind of deals, is there a precedence of a seven year sentence? Uh, you know this this criminal code uh, has been has been there since 1960. The ex-government, that uh, my mother's government, never abused this law in in the way to fight their opponents. They could have done it, but they haven't done it. And uh, uh, this time, you know, Yanukovych had a chance to decriminalize it, uh, knowing that it's a very vulnerable law that can be used, abu you know, be abused. Um, this this charge against her uh, is uh, doesn't have no legal basis because uh, she's accused of signing agreement, but prime minister never signs agreement. Prime minister never uh, is not allowed even to intervene into the relationship between two companies, which were state companies in this case, and uh, so far uh, it's been you know manipulated uh, and um, uh, said that somehow she signed this agreement, which she hasn't. Uh, she, she, she solved the gas crisis and, uh, you know, Ukraine also should be thankful to that. Um, so She's writing letters? I mean, she can communicate with the outside world? Too. Yeah, she, yeah, she can write articles and letters and um, she published a few recently uh, before Christmas and um, just after, after she's been arrested also. Mm -hmm. We hope that it's going to be over soon, and you know there's more and more pressure applied till till Yanukovych can realize, you know, that you know change his ways, and mm. you know.
Otherwise, if the same status quo uh, is, is kept uh, d during and after the parliamentary elections, we don't see how you know democracy can go back and and you know can we get back to the normal ways of politics and rules of the game. Um, thank you very much. <laughs> Any more questions? Have you okay. considered going into politics? Uh, no, no. My only mission is to help uh, my mother and to you know send a message from these people who've been repressed illegally and. I'm you know, trying to trying to get this message through, but yeah. no. All the very best. Thank you very much. Thank you.